The bids are in, the gavel is dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, we are finally hammered. That's right, this is Wine Bids podcasting at all things wine value, wine retail, wine auctions, and just wine. My name is Jeff McGurn. I'm on our marketing team. With me, as always, is our wine expert, Paul, <laughs> the conqueror of Cote Roti, Walker. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the podcast, Paul. We're we'll be talking about um, France and rest of the world. We're going to have a separate podcast for uh, the United States. I want to jump right yeah. into this. Yes, okay? please do. Because uh, now please these do. are these, first of all, let me just say these are all wines. The wines we're going to talk about they're all wines that have come into auction this week, and this this is the auction starting uh, seven thirty. That started at seven thirty p.m. on Sunday, April the fourteenth, and it goes till. 7 p.m. on April uh, the 21st. 21st, yes. Standard time, right? So, uh, right, right. 7 p.m. Pacific on the 21st, April 2024. That's right. And so, uh, so all this stuff you can actually go and we're going to talk about. You can go in and bid on today or whenever you listen to this or tomorrow or you know um so anyway well unless you're but listening after it, the yeah 20th. we should say that if it has you know if things have bids then you they will they will close on the 21st and they yes. will be gone correct so. correct i want to jump right in let's start with burgundy paul i know you oh, started start with bordeaux. Burgundy. Okay, uh, cool. well that's what i like to do i like to start with burgundy i know you prefer bordeaux but we're we'll get, <laughs> oh, please calm down sir so first of all, uh, I only have a few picks, right? Um, okay. Let's run through these. I want to get your thoughts. 96 Masson Loire Merceau Premier Cru for 355. Is that a good deal? Well, me? I don't think you're going to find good deals with the with name. Loire. Loire. <laughs> <laughs> They're associated. End of story. Regardless, you know, unless it's some wine in California okay. lead boy or something. No, it's it's not it's it's not gonna happen. What and, are, and this is the negotiant label and even those wines are very expensive. Yeah they're they're getting crazy. And did you say sorry did you say this is 16 what is the vineyard? 1996 Masson Loire Merceau oh, Premier. Oh Merceau 96. Well then you're entering into some you know premature oxidation territory also. So I don't know. I think you're it's a that's a that's a tricky one. It's dicey. It's a crapshoot there. Actually, one that I thought might have, might be a good deal here is this 05 uh, Domaine Ramenet Bourgogne Blanc. Uh, uh, so, <laughs> 25 yeah, bucks, so, with three of them. You, they all have bids on them. They're, well, they're, there's other Ramenet in the auction this week, too. We don't need to necessarily you know bring those up. But anyway, this is the way to try Domaine Ramenet wines from a great vintage um, yes. for under $30. Well, so at least right now, they're not, who knows if they're going to go and, through. And look, if that one's not right for you, another Ramonet option would be this 1990 Ramonet Montrachet for yes. a cool $2,100. Wow, that's a beautiful <laughs> wine. That's amazing. Uh, which is probably, yeah, probably amazing. I mean, and you look at other 05s, right? Like, uh, and obviously it's not white. This is like a, a, a Favoli Chambertin Claude de Bez, but... Mm -hmm. 425 and we've got a, a, a we have a bottle for 495 in case you want to pay more than 425 and then we've got the 14 for 375 all you know both of those great vintages and then the favoli claude de la roche has two bids on it uh the 14 uh has two bids on it. we have two of them and uh they've gone from 145 to 155 already so yes yeah, so i wanted to touch on this it's this really interesting because the Clos de Bez is substantially more, I mean, it is more, arguably more sought after than the Clos de la Roche, but that looked like a really good deal to me. The 14 Clos de la Roche at 155, especially when you consider there's Corton 2020 for 270. I was like, well, go for the Clos de la Roche 14 at, you know, at 155 or whatever it hammers for. I mean, even if it gets bid up another 50 bucks, that's still pretty reasonable. I, I think there's, yeah, there's other. Yeah, there's another. Yeah, oh five and fourteen Clos de Bez. I mean, those are all, those are not going to be cheap. But still, I thought the Clos de Roche was the real steal in the Favely lineup this week. No, I agree with you, and that's why I picked it out. Like, I really felt like even at that price, that's still a phenomenal deal. And, yeah, uh, you know, we know fourteen's a, a a great year. Uh, so I mean, like you know. Yeah, that looked like a really good deal. 19 Comte la Femme Merceau, uh, Claude de la Baronne, Baronne, I don't know. Baronne. 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 225. Uh, and then actually, okay, this one I thought was really interesting, and I want to I point it out before you do. The 18 Marquis d'Angevy Merceau uh, Centineau. 
uh, mm-hmm. for 90 bucks. We have two of those. I, mm-hmm. Cause I feel like we don't see a ton of, you know, Deange V Blanc. No, there's, um, they're, they're, they come through here and that now and again, but no, it's more, you know, we see the, the Volney pretty often, but not the white wine. So yeah, that's the white a, wine. That's a, that's a, that's a, yeah, that's a cool pick. That's an, that'd be an interesting one. 14 Paul Pernod, uh, Bien Mew, Batard, Mont for 360. And I picked that out because your name is Paul too. So, you know, that's why I went with that one. And then we have a bunch of these Verge wines and like a bunch. Do you see all these Verges from the. Yes. Day? Yes. Yes. I did. Uh, Mid 90s Chablis. You know, it's, it's interesting because I, I recalled seeing i think it's the 95 valmore and there was a 100 point score from pierre ravani years and years ago where he said that he felt he broke into tears after he tried this wine and that always yes kind of- yeah you, you you sent me that well and a, a couple of them and uh well that we have like the the 96 verge pluny marche less uh Ancien, I, I can't even say the, say the rest. Is it Ancenier? Yeah. Ancenier. Yeah. As I'm sure you know, because you memorize them all, but it's number eight in Wine Spectator's <laughs> top 100 wines in 1998. Okay. Well, you know, the 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 winemaker, uh, um, Gufan, his last name is, he makes his own wines from Macaroni. They're amazing. But these wines, I I would be curious to know how these are drinking, because I, you know, it's been a long time since I've tasted mid nineties Verge Chablis, I have to say. Uh, so they, they do look great. The colors look quite good on, on, on many of them. And obviously they wouldn't pass inspection if the colors were too dark, but uh, you know, I'd say do some, do some homework on looking at how these are drinking these days. Cause I'd, I'd be quite curious, but they are, you know, famous winemaking, famous sources. I, I did want to note that like, yes, the thing that struck me was the colors are really nice, right? That I mean, you you can see almost clear as day. The labels look beautiful. Mm-hmm. The capsules look good. The fill levels are good. These bottles have been taken, very, you know, someone's taking very good care of them. 96 Verge Marceau uh, Casse uh, Tet uh, for 35 bucks, right? So you can get some of the stuff for very reasonable prices, but do your research and, you know, see for yourself if this stuff is... Uh, you know, it's still good. What uh, what did you have on your Berg pick that I missed here? So, yeah, there's some some really, really nice wines. There's some Rousseau wines. Um, there was an 80, you mentioned the 19 Lafon Merceau. There's also an 85 Merceau Desiree. I think a couple bottles of it, actually, um, which look quite incredible at 265. Um, there's an 85, same vintage, Red wine, Berto Chamalmuzini, Village Chamalmuzini for 80 bucks, which I thought was quite reasonable uh, for, you know, something with that amount of time on it from a great vintage. Um, there's some Dugat Griot, which doesn't come in too often, or 2010, another amazing vintage. Some Dujac 17, Maurice Saint-Denis. Oh, right. There's a Georges Rumi at Courtrand Charlemagne, which I thought was quite wild that's an obviously phenomenal red producer don't see the Corton Charlemagne it kind of reminds me of the the white wines from from Dangervy we don't see those too often so this was this one stood out to me a couple of bottles of that uh, at 655 and then there's a 69 Jacques Prieur Volney Santino I thought was very very cool so really you know great ripe red vintage um and 180 not not a crazy price obviously it's it's not you know some more famous parcel and or producer but still that's that's a that's not a terrible price to pay for a 69 also another phenomenal red vintage 71 jean gros richborg in for 24.50 there's a 93 michel gros richborg for 552 it's obviously got a bit on it i saw some Pavlo 2010 Savigny Le Bon Le Pouillet at 50. It's interesting. I mentioned the Romanes. There's a magnum of Robert Arnoux Romane Saint Vivant from 1995. I thought it was amazing. I don't remember ever seeing one of those recently. Uh, at 1550, there's uh, the Fevlies we mentioned. 85 Georges Ligné Clos Saint Denis for 405. There's some Jean Griveaux Echezo. And some Jadot Claude Bez as well from 2014. Speaking of Fabley Claude Bez, um, yeah, that that Paul Pernod Bienvenu Batard caught my eye as well. And the Vergés, obviously. So yeah, very, you know, 
eclectic range of vintages and villages. So very, very cool some Burgundies this this week. Well, let's quickly run through some of the regions of France. I only have a few bottles coming in. Alsace, we had four bot. Well, we had four lots coming in. We had tall bottles of the ninety six Zinde Umbrecht, Pinot Gris, uh, Hunever, Claw, Vinsbrühl, uh, and tall bottles of the ninety six Zinde Umbrecht, Pinot Gris, Rangen, Ditan, Claw, Saint Urbain. Um, and then actually one that I did want to mention was this uh, 13 Domain Charles Spar Riesling uh, Schonenborg, which already has a bit on it. So yeah, it was cool. Reasonable. And then there's a bottle of Pinot Noir from Alsace, a 16 Domain L'Auberger. L'Auberger Nuance. Yeah, no, it's it's wild to see full cases of the 96 in Humbrex. It looks right? like somebody <laughs> got the like, back when and... Never I was like, did, did somebody forget? They were like, oh, no, <laughs> no. <it> was. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And Ron and Peter agree, that should be phenomenal, that wine. You know, it's, it I bet it's so holding good. up really, really nicely. So that's 65 yeah. bucks. That's that's a good deal. Those are both just awesome. That sounds so good. Uh, in Champagne, we've got 1999 Pierre Peters Blanc de Blanc Cuvée Special. Already has a bit on it, taking you from 285 to 295. Yeah, it's a rare one. You know, that's a tough to find. What a 25 year old vintage now. I mean, that's that's got to be phenomenal. And and again, not coming through anytime. You know, anytime soon. No, no. And the bottle looks like it's in just. Phenomenal shape too. Yeah, and then uh, ninety five uh, Drapier Blanc de Blanc Cuvée signature for fifty bucks. Actually, fifty one now because all three of those have bids on them. I thought that looked pretty cool. Yeah, not a bad deal. Not a bad deal. And this uh, non vintage Frederick Frederic Savar uh, Extra Brut Premier Cru Les Complis Villevine. Uh, has a bit on it, taking it from 70, well, 70 to 70. We've got five of them, so one of them has a bit on them. Yeah, there's a there's a really nice batch of, of Savar wines in this week. So I, I feel like you only usually see one or two available, and this week it's nice. There's there's multiple bottles of, like, also there's nine bottles of the of the Overture, the, the multi-vintage wine, and then there's 14 the higher end label Mont Benoit Vieux Vines at 240. There's three of those. So yeah, for really, really kind of you know, nice selection of Savar. Really cool. Great, great, great wine. Up Provence, where we've got the did you see the 82 Tampier Bondal uh Torti? <laughs> No, I I didn't. I saw there's magnums of rosé, which I thought was cool, but yeah, no, I didn't. Perdo, I didn't see that. Yeah, there's all. I, I had that Pibar Nome, Rosé, and there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, like, I mean, like, but the 82 Tom Pierre Bundle, so that one has a bit on taking from 120 to 130, but I thought that was pretty cool uh, uh, to see that. And then, yeah, the 85 Prado Bundle Mag for 230. I mean, you think, what do you think the chances are that that thing's still kicking? <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a good question. That's a All right. So question. I did a little bit of research, Paul. I okay. pulled my friends over at Solar Tracker mm -hmm. and there is a tasting note from 2022 saying full, seamless, smooth, steady over three hours. First impression, pleasant tobacco, berry fruit, a wonderful experience. Although I think no, this is Prado Bolt Bandel Rouge. Okay. No, you know what? You know what? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. That's not the that's not the rosé though. Sorry. No, no, no. That's the Bandol. That's not the rosé. Yeah, I was gonna say that the eighty five Bandol Rouge should be great. I yeah. I saw that Magna, but I was like, no. Yeah, the Bandol Rouge. I thought that one looked really good. It was yeah, two hundred thirty dollars for the mag. So no no the yeah the but the rosé sorry the rosé was not from eighty five the band all over eighty five rosé is be uh but but okay mean, okay okay in Savoie did you see the twenty fifteen Rene Canard Savoie Claude de la Galaise Arbine Mondus for forty bucks Rene Canard Savoie Claude de la Galaise Arbine Mondus yes I did see that now that I looked it up you could actually tell what you were saying. See, my pronunciation is getting better. I know, I know. I'm just giving you a hard time as I do. Uh, did you see that this won a bronze medal in a Paris, uh, two, was it 2006? It looks like <laughs> 2006 competition. Concours. Anyway, I just noticed the sticker. That was always On kind the of side. Oh, bronze medal in 06. They're really right. Yeah. 2015. <laughs> Like, okay. One is, I mean, that's uh, 
yeah, that's I, you know, stuff was very hip, I think, among certain, you know, sort well, of have you know, culture, et cetera. But I, yeah, I, that's that's a cool find. I did not see this one. Have you ever won a bronze medal in wine competition, Paul? I don't think. Well, so. No, absolutely okay. not. I, I wouldn't win one anyway. So uh, and then and then let's do the Rhone and then and then Bordeaux and then the rest of the world. Oh uh, seven uh, Henri Bonneau Chateauneuf du Pape Reserve de Celestine. I'm glad you mentioned this. Hundred dollars. I'm glad you mentioned this because this is an 07 Chateauneuf. I actually would take a chance on because I think. As a vintage, it's very controversial, and there's some difficult, or let's just say difficult, drinking wines from 07, despite the high ratings. But Bono is, you know, undisputed master in the region, and I'm sure the wine is amazing. So I did see that. 400, yeah, for that bad boy. 400. So not cheap, but uh, uh, I'll bet you that is absolutely delicious. 19 uh, Pierre Ganon Saint Joseph. Uh, I brought this up because you and I were very fortunate to taste some Trelat uh, just the other week. And I do believe this is would be the same plot of land, right? Uh, because I believe Trelat sold to Ganon. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that, I think that's correct. And that's, you know, the wine's prices have been pushed up pretty high. But like we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I don't think they're really going for more than sort of that 140, 150. At least they haven't in the last, you know, the last few months. So, yeah, if you do see these coming up, I think that's that's what you're going to pay for, at least right now. Wonder probably, probably increase, you know, over the years. But but right now they seem to be kind of kind of hovering in this 140, 150 range. I wanted to bring up, you're going to think I'm crazy, this 2016 Domain St. Demian, uh, Gigondas, this. No. Which yeah. Really, uh, we have 31 at 45 bucks, and I thought yeah. that was really good. I mean, yeah, you win a bottle at, at 45, almost guaranteed, with 31 yeah. bottles available. But yeah, there's there's two there's two uh, San Damian Gigandas available. There's Cuvée Clovis Sorel for 35, and the Soutierra. Those wines are great. Those wines are really good. And then I wanted to bring up this Cave de Tan Detain Le Hermitage Hermitage uh -huh. Epsilon, one bottle in cardboard case. For 240. Is this one you're familiar with? This looks super interesting to me. Yeah, no, it's a very, you know, it's a well respected producer in Hermitage. Um, Epsilon, I want to say this is kind of like, you know, a, a, like a micro cuvee or like a special, you know, a special cuvee that's not produced every year. I can't confirm that, but. That's kind of my suspicion. And they also get really, really big scores. You know, it's got a fancy box. It's got a wax top. It's got a wax seal on the Lots of wax. upper shoulder of the bottle. So, you know, it's it's kind of like very fancy packaging. It looks like it has hand numbered, you know, production uh, serial number or whatever you want to call it on the label. So, yeah, I think this is like limited, you know, limited production release from Cobb but yeah, that's I I cannot tell you what it tastes like. I haven't had it. Can we just talk for a second about how much I hate producers that put wax tops on their <laughs> bottles <laughs> everywhere? We were in Powell and I were at an event and I had to open it. We had to open up like 80 bottles of wine and half of them seemed to have wax tops. And it's it was like it, yeah, I mean it, it does was, make a big mess. Oh my god. If, if they're if they're older than I don't know, 10, 15 years, it's yeah, it can make a real it big mess. It makes a massive mess. And I'm yeah. so annoyed every time it happens. It's just like all this like wax dust all over the place and in my hands. And oh stuff. gosh, yeah. I get super annoyed with it. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it looks beautiful, but it's just super annoying to deal with. Let's let's talk Bordeaux here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I knew you were gonna jump. I wanted to mention there's a great deal in Chateauneuf this week. 16, 2016 Close Saint Jean Chateauneuf at 35. There's eight of them. I thought that was a great deal. It's a very a really well good deal. producer. Yeah. There's an 85 Clop Cornas Magnum, which looked really cool. There's um, Alain Jaume Lirac Clos de Sixt uh, for 20 bucks. Great Lirac. There's also 05 Jean Louis Chauve Hermitage, uh, which looked pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. Half bottles of Vieux Donjon, 16 Chateauneuf. Speaking of, of another 16 Chateauneuf, I thought. That was cool because they're, well, they got biz, but they're $31 for half bottles. There's also a really interesting producer that I kind of keep looking for and meaning to pick up, but there's a 
I believe it's Grenache Blanc. It's Rotem and Munir Sauma, and it's called the Enopia Blanc. It's supposed to be quite tasty. Anyway, a couple couple of those bottles came in this week at thirty bucks, and there's some Cuiron Viognier for twenty bucks for the sixteen, and those were my Rhone picks. Yeah, just I thought there was a lot of a lot of you know a lot of fun stuff from Provence and the Rhone this week. A lot of really cool stuff from Provence and the Rhone. Let's talk Bordeaux, okay? I noticed first of all, I noticed you were bidding on the eighty six mag of Mouton for my birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that wine is so amazing. Thank That's you. So good. Thank you for buying that for me for my birthday. <laughs> That's really sweet of you, Paul. That's um, definitely not your birth year. Sure you I'm sure you set a really high reserve. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not your birth year. So, but that one fit. Yeah, already has a bid on it. Take it from fifteen fifty to sixteen fifty. I'll bet that stuff is just smoking right now. Yeah, that is really, really incredibly good wine. It's it's an out of mag. It should be just unbelievably good now. So oh, I didn't think six seventy five was actually too bad for O three Latour. You know, no, no. I mean that's that, but you know, that's like entry level Latour pricing. I hate to say it. You know, it's entry level Latour out. pricing. But O three, like that's a good that's a good vintage. For yeah, for, yeah. I mean, I was going to say unless you're talking about like a like a funky vintage from the you know seventies or sixties, it, it it's not a terrible price for for a you know for a good to great vintage. Uh, in the last 20, what, 25 years. So. 25 years, yeah. Actually, I wanted to, to point out, because you and I had this together last week, the 1990 mag of Chateau de Chem. That stuff is so good. And we had a case of it in last week uh, mm-hmm. that I had on my list of 90 de Chem. That's right. so good. And 650 for a mag of yeah, not too bad. That's not a, too bad. Yeah, three hundred twenty-five dollars per sip. No, and it's it's yeah. That wine is just singing right now. It's, it's it is really really good. I, I got a little sip of it at the beginning of the day, and I'm sure it just got better and better throughout. It was so so good. Everyone who yeah. tried it just loved it. We have six bottles of the sixteen Leo of Barton uh, for one forty-five. I didn't think that was too crazy. It's a great vintage of Barton. The O five Angelus for four sixty-five. We have nine mm-hmm. of those. Woo! And yeah. four, uh, we have four bottles at five ten. In case you want to pay more than one five, <laughs> you know, just throwing that out there. Some people, you know, like to flaunt their largesse. Uh, we've got uh, actually one that I thought was a good, a really good deal. The sixteen Pap Clement for ninety. We have uh, twelve of those. Uh, great vintage of Pap Clement and. Right mentioning all these too or excuse me not mentioning but i've been you know taking these down as well and that that yeah 16 pop to come on i feel like this is a you know it's on the verge of going over 100 and i really think it's going to very soon where it's like you know sort of that in that it's in that sweet spot right now where it's it's not quite a hundred bucks, but it's gonna be soon. It's gonna be soon. That's not it's it's good stuff, right? It's oh really yeah, it's great stuff. wine. And while we're on 16, 16 uh Obali, uh for, we have nine of those, two of them have bids, 95 bucks. Uh, actually, three mm-hmm. of the three of three of the bottles have bids for, and there's they're still at ninety-five dollars. So you could probably swoop in and get one at ninety-five bucks. I didn't think that was a crazy deal. Great vintage, phenomenal producer. That stuff's super tasty. The 08 uh, Chateau L'Avangile, 12 of those at 195 and the 18 Rausan Segla, mm-hmm. those at 110 05 Trontenoy for 320 We've got three of those bad boys, 05, great year, great vintage. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, coming down a bit in price, the 18 Domaine des Chevaliers, uh, we have two of those for uh, both have bids, so they're at eighty one dollars now. Even at eighty one, I didn't think that was a bad deal. Eighteen is a phenomenal vintage. I think that's no, the no, you know. And so last week, I know we were off, but I did have picks from last week, and I noticed there was a big, nice batch of like eighteen, nineteen, and twenty Bordeaux, and there are just yeah. so great deals. And Domaine Chevalier is just that's a perfect I, example. I had yeah. all of those in my picks last week. We, we were yeah. in the podcast, but I I done all the picks and. Like I was just like another eighteen, another nine. I know. And I I, I, I want to look, but I I think going through my you know going through your picks, and you probably do the same thing. If you track something, you know when you go back after the auction started that the things that you track that are gone, you know, have obviously sold. And I noticed that a huge swath of Bordeaux that I tracked had sold through. So those you know we keep talking about this, but they are just getting grabbed right and left because they're steals. They're cheaper than futures. Yes. And, 
Yeah, Domain Chevalier 18, that was and it got they get big, big scores if that matters, you know. But um, um, 2010 Fleur Cardinal for 65. I actually thought I think that 2010 is a great year. Fleur Cardinal, fun, you know, great producer. I didn't think yeah. five bucks was a bad deal. 2012 Chateau Le Gay for uh 90 bucks. And then uh the My- 2018 uh Les Carmes Aubryon for mm-hmm. 120. We have two of those. I actually think that's not bad for Les Carmes Aubryon. I don't know why, but I always feel like it sh- I feel like it should cost more. And every time I look at a price of LC HB, I'm I'm like, I feel like ah, that seems cheap for that. Cause I think that stuff is I it's, think that's just really good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Like Carmes Aubryon. It's good and it's it's not is easy to find as, you know, as Opry or even the mission for that matter. But again, it's great vintage, not expensive. Yeah. What did, what did I miss, Paul? Um, yeah, you touched on, you know, a lot of stuff. I, I kind of picked up on like some big quantities of, of Bordeaux this week. That, that was interesting. Kellen Segur 15 is in. There's a bunch of it, a case and a half at 110. Uh, Cantermore, I thought was a nice deal for the 2015, 35 bucks. You know, you could spend. You don't have to spend a ton on a nice, nice wine. It's night nine years old and probably drinking great. Uh, Eighty-two Du Cru snuck in three of those this week. Twenty twenty as well, uh, which was pretty. It seemed pretty high, two ninety-five. But I mean, not not too surprising. Uh, you mentioned the Decan. That, that was pretty incredible. There's a seventy-one Gazan Magnum for one thirty, which I didn't think was a crazy price. Sixteen Oprion as well caught my eye. Seventy-six Lemission three liter. Did you see that bottle? Yeah, but, uh, that's kind of a you know hard. That's it's like a not the best year. It is after the most famous wine they made from the last, you know, 50 years or whatever. The 75 was incredible. But anyway, three liter of 76. I over. thought I almost mentioned that, but it's not, you know, it's not the best vintage, but man, I mean, 76, you know, 76 Lamasan, And I thought that one was really cool. It's gotta be great. And then I saw there's the 88 and two, which I've had in years prior it was tannic and kind of difficult to drink, but I'll bet it's probably gotten quite good over the years and it's it's quite a bit less than some of their other you know better vintage wines um the 88s at 280 uh oh yeah 1990 speaking of 90s so turns if you want a really reasonable example in half bottles la Fourie Perigay, 1990 for 35 bucks for the half bottle so thought that was a great deal some nice lafitte in 9801 and 08 caught my eye uh yeah 2000 and 2003 latour 2020 lost label lost cost for 305. So, you know, some more 2020s kind of filtering in. Um, 05 Lynch Bage at 200. Oh, yeah. 07 Malartique Le Gravier Blanc, I thought was quite interesting. It's got a bid. It's at 36. 59 Margot, you know, legendary wine um, at 1050. There's also 83, which is incredible at 530. 95 as well. Um, and 2010 and then yeah just amazing 59 new time <laughs> that wine is again like this week just two of my favorite wines you know of all time 59 new time is unreal and then the 86 magnum like you mentioned it's just incredible 88 is also in there so it's like a really nice selection of mouton but 88 always interested me i haven't had it in a long long time it originally got a really big score i think from the spectator and now it's been kind of downgraded but uh, 1990 is another kind of controversial one. 09, 16, and 19. I think you mentioned this, maybe the 16. Um, Chambaran, 66 in really nice shape. A couple of those. 82 Pichon another sort of banner, you know, big time 100 pointer from Parker years and years ago, but still apparently drinking really well. And the 09 as well. So, yeah, lots of cool stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, one for for me. Again, I thought it was a great Saturn's deal for 35. Yeah, that's that. Those are my picks for Bordeaux. So, do we have a few more minutes, Paul, to do the rest of the world? Or um, I unfortunately have to run. Unfortunately, so. Paul has to yeah. run. That being said, all of our picks will be posted online. So even if we don't get to the podcast episode, you'll still see all of our picks from around the world um, online on our blog posts and so on and so forth. And usually, we send out an email too. So uh, just and just remember. You can get a $15 off an order of $150 or more if you use the code. Uh, <laughs> what was this week? <laughs> Conquer. C-O-N-Q-U-E-R-O-R, right? Conquer. 
Because that's what Paul is. That was a conqueror of coat roti. Conqueror of coat roti. That's okay. your nickname, Paul. Okay. And uh, it's good for this week's auction only. So grab that code, use it, get $15 off an order of $150 or more. Uh, take a look at our uh, blog post and you can see all of our picks. All the stuff is up in auction. You can go bid on this week for the auction ending April 21st. Okay. That's right. Uh, now, with that, this has been Jeff McGurn and Paul Walker wishing you happy bidding and cheers. Cheers.